Hey friends, I'm Karina and welcome back to 25 Days of Budgets. Today's day 24 and today we're going to talk about five helpful tips for how to be a successful financial partner. Let's go ahead and get into it. Alright guys, so as you probably know from watching my channel, I am married and my husband and I are doing this financial journey together. Now, let me sidetrack for just a little bit. When my dad was little, he, he used to watch a show and I think it was a show, it was either a show or a book, and there were two different types of bees. There was a do bee or a don't bee. And his mom would always say to him, which bee are you going to be? Are you going to be a do bee or a don't bee? And she would always encourage him to be a do bee. And so that's what I'm encouraging you to do. Be a do bee when it comes to your finances and a partnership. So today I just want to talk about five tips and five B's for how to have a successful partnership when you are dealing with finances. And these probably translate to a successful partnership in whichever area of life you're looking at. So let's go ahead and get started with B number one. So the first B is to be open. Now, when my husband and I were first married, we didn't talk about finances at all. In fact, when we were dating, we never talked about them really. Uh, it just wasn't really something that was on our radar, and that's how we were raised. It wasn't something that we intentionally like, kept from one another. We just were never raised talking about money, right? We worked, and the money went to our bank account, and that was pretty much it. Like, we paid things we had to pay, and then if we needed to buy extra things, we just put them on credit cards. And we watched our parents do that, and that's how we were raised. Um, and so for lack of a better term, like, you know, neither of us were really sat down with our parents or taught in our homes about finances and how to be, be successful um, with our finances or be responsible with our finances. And so we literally had like no foundation for what married money would look like. So that's tip number one is to be open right? Be the opposite of what we were. So when we got married, I remember we were on our honeymoon and we had combined our finances. We had combined our bank account at this point. And I looked at our bank account and realized that we were like overdrawn. And I was like, we're on vacation. Like, how is this possible? And we had to have a really like frank conversation in the moment about our finances and where we were going to go moving forward. And so we both were really open and we talked for probably the first time ever about the debts that we had, what we owed, what our payments were each month, everything. And I know that sounds like absolutely insane. Like, how did you get married without talking about these things? I honestly can't even tell you. Like, I, I do not know how we were married and on our honeymoon without having talked about these important issues. And so the first thing that we had to do was sit down and just be open. We just had to be transparent. And to be honest, in probably this is probably true in most relationships, but one of us had more debt than the other, and the one of us is me. Um, and so I had a lot more debt than my husband had. He had, for the most part, been pretty responsible and pretty frugal, um, so he didn't have a lot of money that he owed, but he did have some. And again, he just wasn't raised in any other way. You know, that was what he'd seen his parents do, and so that's what he did. So. We had to sit down and be open and it was scary, but it was really, really beneficial to our relationship to get it all out on paper and to say, okay, this is what we have. This is the mess that we're looking at. We're now married. So this is our mess together, not your mess and his mess or not, you know, my mess and your mess. It's our mess together. How are we going to clean this up and move forward? So again, B number one is to be open. B number two is to be willing to give and take. Now, when you're creating a budget, there are going to be things that one person is going to want to put more, more money to, the other person's going to want to put less money to, maybe someone will want to create a complete category that, like, one person never even thought of, um, you know, or maybe one party is used to spending a certain amount on, say, like, their personal money, right? Like me, I could spend all of our money on personal money, but <laughs> whereas my husband spends, like, none. And so that was a give and take. I knew that I could spend up to and over any limit that we set for ourselves as far as personal money, and that my husband would probably never spend all of his. So we had to compromise and come up with a, a number that made sense and a number that gave us both freedom and a, has allowed us to feel like we have some money that we get to play around with and do fun things with that are important to us without sacrificing or damaging the budget and our relationship. So I would encourage you to be willing to give and take. There are going to be times where, um, you know, 
there are going to be moments where you have to decide, okay, am I going to bend in this direction or am I going to just stand still and know it's my way or the highway, right? And that goes for a lot of things in your relationship. You have to be willing to sacrifice and to be sacrificed to, I guess, <laughs> as well at times. There are going to be certain things that sometimes it just has to happen. Say, you know, one of you has a car problem, right? And you maybe you were planning on like paying off a debt in that time or using certain money or you have like a vacation fund set, set aside, but the car problem trumps any other money issue that you have at the time or anything that you're contributing towards. You have to be willing to say, am I going to sacrifice our vacation to repair this car or whatever the issue may be. You know, am I willing to sacrifice now and give a little so that we can gain in the future? So be willing to give. Number three is to be patient. Now in our family, <sighs> oh, it's kind of interesting because I am the one who probably feels like most responsible, I think, for our finances. Um, my husband is very like quiet and kind of to himself and um, He's just not very like open with these things. And again, this is the way that we were taught with money. We were taught that this is not something you talk about and this is not something that you deal with together, right? This is just like something that each person deals with on their own. So for my husband, it has been, it's been a learning situation. It's been a learning for both of us, but with him, it's been probably more so of a learning curve and a progression towards having this new lifestyle where we talk about money and it's okay and it's not a taboo thing. And we're able to say, you know, to look at our situation and to make choices based on the options that are available in a really good, healthy way and to have healthy discussions. So for me, it's required a lot of patience and I'm sure for him it's required patience with me also because I am one who will just like saturate myself in something and I will go out and like read all the books and listen to all the podcasts and then I will just spew all this information and he's had to be patient with me as well. So if one of you is like running the charge and is fully dedicated and has all these goals and all of these things like, you know, planned out and you are on this mission and the other person is kind of like, wait, like, give me some time to like digest this and explain this concept to me again. And what are the steps and, you know, what are, what step are we on? I'm not even sure. Um, just be patient and be willing to learn and grow together. Number four is to be honest. So this kind of ties back into number one, which was to be open about your situation. But number four is to be honest and it goes beyond the initial conversation that you have of what your financial status is. And so being honest means being honest in what you're spending your money on, being honest in, you know, which accounts that you have and how you're spending money in those different things. So for example, um, I do have like a separate account basically. And I use, we use that for our emergency fund. Like that's where it stays. And so instead of opening a different account, um, that we had together, we just used one that we already had that that's it's in my name. Um, so that's where emergency fund sits, but because that's where that money sits, I, and my name is only linked to it. My husband doesn't really have access to it. I could do whatever I want with that account, right? Like I could be running up, you know, tons of money. I could be going to Starbucks every day. I could be doing whatever I want with that money, but because it, we are being honest and open about our situation. I wouldn't do that, right? Like I, do, I don't do that. I wouldn't do that. It's something where I look at it and I know that all our money is our money. It's all of our money together now. And so it's not okay for one of us to just run out and buy a bunch of stuff or to be hiding money. So just being open and honest about those things. It has had, a, we've had, have, have had a bit of a snag with the Christmas budget because our Christmas budget budget was just in our, um, our joint checking account. And obviously like, I mean, I don't know if this is true for you, but we have done a lot of our Christmas purchases <laughs> online. And so that caused like a little bit of a snafu. We'd, you know, tell each other, okay, like I made a purchase, like don't look at what the purchase names are. Like, like, let's just like look at the overview and just because we didn't want to ruin the surprise. And so that's been a little bit awkward. We might change it like going forward next year with getting like prepaid cards or something like that. So that's been a little bit awkward, but uh, just be open and honest about what it is that you're doing and, you know, wh what you're dealing with. And that goes for any struggles that you're having too. You know, um, I used to try and like hide whenever I was dealing with like a setback or a struggle in this process. And I would just try and like put on a brave face because I didn't want, you know, for my husband to feel guilty or for me to feel guilty or, or anything. And I had to throw that out the window because it added a lot of stress. And so just encourage you to be honest about the situation, whether it's a good thing or a bad thing, and move forward together. 
And number five, speaking of togetherness, number five is to be a team. You are in this together, and whether you believe that you should have joint checking accounts or separate checking accounts, or whether you believe that whichever of you accrued the debt needs to pay off the debt with your paychecks, whatever it is that your system is, you need to work together as a team and find a way to work together. Because at the end of the day, this is your life together. It's not your husband's life and your life. It's not your wife's life and your life. It's not your boyfriend or your girlfriend. It's not either separate lives anymore. It's a life together. If that's what you're building, then that's really how you need to work and you need to be a team that's committed to the success of your team, right? So you wouldn't like go out to a football game and be cheering for like just whoever happens to be winning, right? You'd be committed to the team that you're there to see and encourage them in their game. So you are your biggest cheerleader when it comes to working together in a partnership. And you have to encourage one another and be there for one another in the hard times, in the good times, in the low times, in the super broke times, you know, in the times where you are just like living lavishly and you have like lots of money. In whichever time that you're in, you need to do it together and be together as a team. So guys, those are my five tips for how to have a successful partnership and how to be a doobie when it comes to your money. I hope that you've enjoyed these tips and that they're helpful for you. And again, I really do think they translate to into all aspects of your relationship. So thanks guys so much for watching. Be sure to like the video if you've enjoyed it and don't forget to subscribe for more videos just like this. I'll see you tomorrow for our final day of 25 days of budgets. Thanks so much for watching.